Hello, and from my side, I bring you greetings from a conference of European churches. So you have heard from a speaker from Canadian Council of Churches, and now we go back to Europe. I will just say, uh, in my presentation, it basically has two parts. First part, it's basically the way how we do advocacy vis-a-vis -vis international institutions, like European Union and Council of Europe, uh, in terms of social and economic and cultural rights. And the second part is basically uh, training on social and economic and cultural rights that we have developed uh, for uh, CAC member churches and this is basically one training where we equip theologians how do they can uh, how ca they can basically monitor violation of social economic uh, and cultural rights by their uh, states so in terms of the advocacy uh, I will just focus on um, uh, one or two examples uh, recent examples where we have been advocated um, against uh, poverty in the European Union because in uh, June 2010 European Union uh, agreed on a poverty and social exclusion uh, target of lifting at least 20 million people out of poverty by 2020 beside, uh, based on the three indicators of poverty, uh, relative poverty, material deprivation and jobless households. However, EU member states have been left free to set their own national targets on the basis of the most appropriate indicators, taking into account their national circumstances and priorities. In the year 2000, the European Union embarked on the strategy to make a decisive impact on the eradication of poverty by 2010. Despite its growth uh, and job strategy, a substantial part of the population still suffers from, from poverty and social exclusion and faces serious obstacles in accessing employment, education, housing, social and financial services. Before the financial crisis, 80 uh, million people in the European Union, it means 60%, were estimated to live at risk of poverty, living with 60% or less of the median income. More recent figures refer to 84 million people, or 70% of the EU population, living at risk of poverty. The political declaration of intent in 2000 was not sufficient to reduce poverty and exclusion. Will it be different now? Poverty takes away the means and possibilities for those individuals affected to participate fully in society. It places them in vulnerable and often stigmatized positions. As Christians, we consider every human being to be created in the image of God, endowed with inherent dignity. We consequently advocate that every human being should be uh, able to live in dignity, holistically and, to, uh, and autonomously develop their capacities to contribute and, and uh, to contribute to and participate uh, in the society. Uh, as Conference of European Churches, we have recommended to the European Union a few issues uh, and the, the first and the, the most uh, important one was on the living, living wage, where we said that the European Commission should work with EU member states to develop a system of minimum wages to ultimately address the phenomenon of the working poor and ensure a living wage for all. On the minimum income, member states should work towards adequate minimum income schemes, allowing empowerment and full participation of all individuals. In terms of homelessness, uh, the European Union should go beyond the provision of only emergency services and set out a strong long-term political vision to permanently eradicate homelessness and improve the living condition of people uh, with the inadequate housing strengthen efforts towards alternative consumption and production patterns towards a real questioning of current cultural trends in which unnecessary consumption and greed are encouraged and valued and instead, instead promote alternative values such as mod moderation and generosity. Recognizing the informal economy and uh, quantify the economics of life by using a new methodology and indicators that focus on measuring the impact poverty and social exclusion on women and on men. Promote volunteering, which is an active expression of citizenship and contributes to community welfare and co uh, cohesion. Increase the recognition of unpaid work, done especially in the family and in the care sector, for instance by health insurance, the right to a pension and by, by the recognition of informal qualification. One issue where we also struggle in Europe uh, is uh, Sunday as a weekly uh, rest day 
And on this issue we said that we recommend that the European Union to protect the Sunday as a collective day of rest for society to preserve the health of workers as an important precondition for a participatory society because the European Court of Justice, which is the Court of Justice of the European Union, said uh, at, um, at some occasion uh, that they don't see why Sunday should be the day uh, where people should have basically day off, why that it's not Saturday or Friday or any other day. Um, in terms of uh, the training that we have developed uh, for theologians, where we wish to equip theologians to monitor social and economic and cultural rights and basically violations, um, we have developed this training that uh, any one of you from uh, in the room can basically conduct this training in their parish or in their community. And of course that depends very much who are the people who are standing in front of you and who is the target group. Each of these trainings that we have developed, uh, I see I have just one minute so I will really go through it, uh, starts with the human rights concept, then sharing session for example, if you have personal experience related to the limitation of social, economic and cultural rights, what do we mean by this social, economic and cultural rights? Then we are, going, uh, we are looking into the theological reflection, what is the link, and this is something that we explored during the whole time of this conference, what is the connection between economy and theology. Then to mention just Article 22 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says that everyone as a member of society has the right to social security and is entitled to realization through national efforts and international cooperation and in accordance with the organization and resource of each state on the economic, social and cultural rights indispensable for his dignity and the free development of his personality. It means everybody has the right to have uh, the, the, to hold the right uh, to housing, health care, education, adequate standard of living, right to work, social security and so on. And of course, then we embark on the discussion of social justice. And here you have legal tools where basically uh, you can see how uh, and certain standards which you didn't see on the screen but below every uh, slide there is explanation how to prepare the slide and uh, uh, there you have basically um, uh, reasons how you can condemn the state in terms of violation of social and economic and cultural rights for example if there is no uh, adequate um, um, a legislation in this term or for example if somebody is cutting your rights uh, in this regard and more you can find uh, basically in uh, this book which is called Human Rights Training Manual for European Churches where we are trying to equip our members to monitor human rights. That doesn't mean that we are going to, uh, to create and to promote um, theologians as lawyers, neither lawyers to transform into the theologians but basically to link theology and law and to see how we can uh, collaborate for the benefit of society.